there are two types of IP addresses. There's IPv4, which has been around for a long time, and there's the newer IPv6. For now, we're going to focus completely on IPv4. There's a whole section on IPv6 coming up later in the series. Many devices or hosts on the network have IP addresses. When one device wants to send a message to another device, it breaks the information into packets. Each packet has the sending device's IP address and the destination device's IP address. IP addresses have a clever design. While they look like one single address, there are actually two addresses in one. One part of the address refers to the host device itself. The other part refers to the network or subnet that the device connects to. Think of this example. Here we have two networks joined by a router. The router's job is to pass packets between the two different networks. Each device has a unique IP address. Within the network, the first part of the address is the same. This part refers to the network that the device belongs to. The second part is unique within the network. This is the individual device's address. When the two devices are on the same subnet, the source sends packets straight to the destination. But often the sender and receiver are on different networks. We can tell because the beginning of the source and destination IPs are different. In this case, the packet travels to the router and the router forwards the packet on to the correct network. We'll now take a closer look at how the network address and the host address combine to create an IP address. First, note that we represent an IP address as four decimal numbers. A dot separates each number. This format, called dotted decimal notation, makes it easy for humans to read. Each of these numbers is eight bits long. So to a computer, an IP address is a 32-bit number, that is, 32 ones and zeros in some combination or another. How much of the IP address is the network and how much is the host? Is it a fixed number of bits, or does it depend on the situation? When we configure a host with an IP address, we also configure a subnet mask. As shown here, it uses dotted decimal notation too, the same as an IP address. Keep in mind, Computers and devices see these addresses as binary numbers, that is ones and zeros. So our example will look like this. If you need a refresher on how binary numbers work, take a look at the video on our channel. The IP address looks almost random. In contrast, the subnet mask looks very orderly. All the ones are on the left and all the zeros are on the right. Let's draw a line between the ones and zeros of the mask up through the IP address. The IP address is now in two parts, the part covered by the mask's ones and the part covered by the mask's zeros. If you look at it like this, it's quite simple. The part on the left is the network address and the part on the right is the host address. In this example, we have 24 ones in the subnet mask. That means that this is a 24 bit subnet mask that leaves eight bits for host addresses. 8 bits means we can have up to 256 host addresses. We can't quite use them all, but I'll explain that soon. The interesting part is that we can change the length of the subnet mask, that is, the number of ones in the mask. What would happen if we changed this to a 20-bit subnet mask? We now have 12 bits available for hosts. That allows up to 4096 host addresses but there are less bits available for use by subnets. So when we plan out a network, as we're going to see in the next lesson, we can change the size of the subnet mask to suit our needs. This is called VLSM, or Variable Length Subnet Mask. Dotted decimal notation is one way of displaying a subnet mask. Another way, which is usually nicer, is CIDR notation. This stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. This is a forward slash followed by the number of ones in the mask. In this example, there are 20 ones. Inside a notation, that would be slash 20. We will use both types of notation throughout this course. I said earlier that we can't quite use all the IP addresses in a subnet. There are two special addresses. These are the very first address and the very last address in the subnet. The first address, that is when the host bits are all zero, 
is the network address. In this example, we have the address 10.2.3.0. The subnet mask is slash 24. A slash 24 subnet mask is very convenient for humans like us to read as it covers the first three octets of the address in a nice neat way. That leaves the host part of the IP addresses as all zeros. We cannot assign this address to any host. The second special address is when the host address is all ones. This is the broadcast address. Sometimes a host needs to send a packet to all devices in the subnet. That's what the broadcast address is for, sending packets to all devices. We cannot configure a host with the broadcast address. Now let's jump onto a Cisco router and see how this is configured. First, we enter configuration mode. Then, we enter interface configuration mode. In this example, we're configuring interface gigabit 0 slash 0. We use the IP address command to set the IP. Cisco routers and switches generally use the dotted decimal notation for subnet masks. By default, router interfaces are in the disabled or shut down state. We can enable them with the command no shut. And finally, we can exit configuration mode. We can see a list of interfaces on the router with show IP address brief. This includes the interface name, as well as its IP address if it has one. Here we can see interface gig 00 with the IP address that we configured. I'd like to remind you that I have another video on IP addressing. It's part of the Introduction to Networking series. So if you feel that we've been moving a little too fast in this session, that video is sure to help.